Figures show that in 2017, African tech startups raised over $500 million in funding. The money raised mainly from investors in Europe and North America presents a 50% increase from the previous year. Analysts say that the ability of African tech startups to raise this amount of capital is a sign that the global investment ecosystem is starting to take note of the potential in Africa's nascent technology and investment landscape. This kind of interest and boost in investment will help young tech entrepreneurs like Emeka Jene is from Togo. Emeka is the founder of Gozem, a transport technology platform that seeks to solve one of Africa's greatest challenges, its logistics. And Zem is the name for Zem, short for Zemijan, which is the name for motorcycle taxis in Francophone West Africa. So what we're trying to do is build the future of transport in, um, in Africa, but we're really starting with Francophone West Africa, and a lot of people ask us why. And then just in brief, the real answer is that if you go south in southern Africa, if you go in eastern Africa, you go to northern Africa, you run into players like Uber, you run into players like Taxify, Kareem, and other players. What we want to do is actually be those players. So if you go into our markets like Benin, Togo, Mali, Cameroon, we don't run into any big players. You want to be the guys you run into. So effectively, we're a ride-hailing app where the Uber or actually our inspiration is Gojek in Indonesia. So we want to be like an Uber but more feature-rich. A maker startup company will be competing with other much more established global players in the logistics marketplace, companies like Uber. He says for him, that is more of an opportunity than it is a challenge. What's also different from Uber, we started with a, a mobile first mentality and a cash first mentality. Actually, my background, I worked for Uber in Nigeria, so I kind of saw um, how slow the company was to adapt to what the market wants because their revenues really generate from Europe, developed markets, so it's very hard for the product team to prioritize things that are at a lower, lower uh, value bracket. So we want to be those guys. We want to beat Uber to these markets, and we know everybody's coming. For example, we know Uber is now searching for people in Abidjan, which is one of our target markets. So kind of our strategy is to build a brand there, build a real business there across a lot of verticals, um, certainly people transport, certainly food delivery, but also across um, other services. Africa is home to the youngest population in the world. It is estimated that over 60% of its population are below the age of 25. And to many of these young people, Technology is the great equalizer as they seek to catch up with the rest of the developed world. Many will be building their businesses on digital platforms. They will be clients for Julius Odai, a software developer from Ghana. As the name suggests, DevLess um, is from two words, develop less. So basically, the goal, the vision, the DNA, the philosophy of the organization is to make software development, um, specifically web and mobile application development, very, very simple. And that is what we seek to achieve with our company. Emeke and Odai are but a microcosm of a growing class of young African techpreneurs whose innovations are a constant affirmation that the future of technology is not going to be built in Silicon Valley, but in Africa. That premise is supported by Alex Sado. He says that one of the encouraging signs is the number of African startups that are using new technologies like artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to lead to transformations in Africa as well. And when I say going to... It's actually already doing that because we see that the startups here are already employing artificial intelligence and data-driven processes to, to, to transforming their organizations. A simple metric is about 80% of the 30 companies we have here at Demo Africa are actually leveraging data in very unique and fantastic ways to affect their spaces. Alex is a product lead at a Silicon Valley-based company. He traveled to Casablanca to talk to young tech entrepreneurs at this year's Demo Africa. So right here you see Ismat.io. They're a really truly transformational company from Algeria. And they are building an RIS platform. It's a radiology information systems uh, platform that is going to help further the, the, the treatment and the care of cancer uh, patients in Algeria and beyond, of course. Uh, when I spoke with them, they explained to me that in their locality, 
there's only very few doctors that can actually treat cancer patients. And so there ends up being very long lines. People in the village and the city don't get access. But with their product, they are taking medical care online, digitizing it, enabling their doctors to see a lot more patients faster, and also enabling doctors in the diaspora who want to help out to also work with local patients. As they continue to do that with their current partnerships with big hospitals, they're collecting data and using that to train their AI models that would then be able to um, diagnose diseases. It was really fantastic conversation I had with the founder because they're going to be building some of these models using the NVIDIA GPUs just because of the speed it's going to take and shorting their training time from, uh, he mentioned about a month and a half to a couple of days. I'm really excited about what they can achieve with Smart.io in Algeria and other parts of Africa. Some of the most positive indicators of global interest in Africa's innovation and tech space is seen through the kind of investments by tech giants like Google and Facebook in tech hubs across the continent. In 2016, Facebook announced that it would invest $24 million in Andela, a company that trains young African developers in Africa. They also opened a community tech hub in Lagos. Google, meanwhile, is supporting a number of African tech startups through its Launchpad Accelerator, also based out of Lagos, where it offers mentorship opportunities and trainings to young entrepreneurs. These tech hubs across the continent are a pipeline for young innovators as they seek to attract both local and global investment. For Voice of America, I'm Jackson Vungani. Mm-hmm.